that what not so wholesome behavior was hidden behind the clean cut Brady Bunch. There were clothes on, there were some clothes off, but there were, uh, there were it was, yeah, they said put your clothes back on, put your clothes on and get out of here. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll were very prevalent. It was uh, very accepted, it was very hip. Maureen's asleep, they would just jump into her bunk. They were just absolutely at war with each other. I actually do have a porn credit. All on TV Guide, the truth behind the sitcom scandals. The Brady Bunch hormones run riot. This, this idea dawned on me. Maureen's asleep. I would just jump into her bunk. The police come. They said, put your clothes back on. Put your clothes on and get out of here. Oh, when we continue with TV Guide, the truth behind the sitcom scandals. It would be difficult to think of a TV show more wholesome than The Brady Bunch, but what actually happened behind the scenes has all the ingredients of a Hollywood scandal. At various times, different cast members have disassociated themselves with The Brady Bunch. On this program, Maureen McCormick has declined to participate. The Brady Bunch told the story of a widower with three boys who marries a divorcee with three girls. The on-screen blending of these two sets of children was the basis for some of the series' best shows. The off-screen blending of these six children provided even more interesting stories. This is Brady Sex. I know that we were six kids, three boys and three girls, stuck together with nothing but adults all around us for, for all those years. And we were, we were interested in each other, absolutely, no question about it. <laughs> I'm 17, 18, and uh, I think fair to say hormonally driven. I would uh, walk by an interesting pattern of wallpaper sometimes, and I was excited. One question, one question, always. <clears throat> Have you done Eve? Have you done Maureen? <laughs> it's like that's all that anybody wants to know. For lack of other choices, we all got paired up. I, w I was in love with Susan. She was, she was just my world, just the greatest, greatest thing. We'd go into the tiger's doghouse to make out, and we didn't know how to kiss. Or, you know, we'd, we'd just hug each other, go, I love you, I love you. When it became apparent that, uh, that Eve Plum and Maureen McCormick uh, were, were uh, growing up, uh, then, of course, you know, Susan was out, out of the picture, and I was, I was after Eve. Eve had now developed. She had breasts, and I was noticing. Well, Maureen and Eve wanted to go braless. Well, gosh, this show would be even more popular now in syndication if they had. We had little tiny dressing rooms like the, that, they, that you could tow around. When we weren't working and, and we didn't have school, we'd hang out in there and, uh, and you know, kids will be kids. And you leave them alone long enough, they'll do something, something wrong, believe me. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll were very prevalent. It was uh, very accepted. It was very hip. Robert Reed uh, was generous enough to invite all the Brady Bunch kids to accompany him and to go together, basically as a family, to, uh, to London. And we got to go on this ship, the QE2, the Queen Elizabeth II. Beautiful ship out of New York. And I was thinking, great time to make some moves. Barry and I stayed in a cabin, and even Maureen stayed in a cabin. Well, Barry was definitely going to make something happen with Maureen on this ship. For me, a big part of that trip was just about, you know, how to orchestrate the whole thing around to where, you know, I might actually become her stateroom mate. Well, Maureen had to be alone in her room, which meant that I was alone <laughs> in our room. He plum, played Jan, had this tremendous crush on Christopher Knight, played Peter. And uh, so I was looking to see how I could use that to my advantage. They, they worked this whole thing out. They didn't need to involve me because, you know, I'm kind of like Mikey, you know? <laughs> just, just, he'll eat it. I mean, he'll eat anything. He's, I'm just sitting there, you know, just like um, having things happen to me. I knocked on the door and, uh, and I said, uh, Eve, I think Chris wants to see you. I'm sure I was quite thrilled at the time. She jumps out, bolts out of there, and over to my stateroom, which gave me entree to their stateroom. I could guarantee you nothing happened. She's nibbling on my ear and my neck. Oh, so you now he's got a great better memory than I do. So I was like, oh, I like this. Maureen's asleep. I didn't know what, uh, what the heck I was going to do then. And then I thought this, this idea dawned on me, but I would just jump into her, her, uh, Bunk. 
maybe she wouldn't notice. <laughs> When it came down to it, I think that we were, that we were just too young to, to really, well, I was, you know, to really go through with anything. I got in there, and I hear this, Barry? And I said, shh, it's all right, it's all right. What in the heck are you doing? And I said, oh, uh, 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 I, I, I just, well, didn't fly. <laughs> didn't fly. I was out of there. <laughs> oh, look, Barry's back. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that was one of the last, last grand attempts. In 1994, Barry Williams published a book about what it was really like growing up Brady. It revealed many shocking behind-the-scenes moments with America's least shocking TV family. But nothing was more scandalous than the story of Barry's attempted off-screen romance with his TV mom, Florence Henderson. Can Florence come out and play? <laughs> I was all the time trying to get her attention, trying to uh, make jokes, uh, make her look, make me look good in her eyes, that kind of a thing. And, and then I hatched this scheme to, uh, to to take her out on a real live date, uh, never thinking uh, for once that um, she, you know, probably coming at this from a completely different point of view. Basically, I'm just I'm just thinking in my best Greg Brady fashion how I'm going to score here. <laughs> Uh, I invited her to go out to see a singer at, uh, at a nightclub here in Los Angeles. And uh, like much to my surprise and delight, she, she accepted this, this, this date. And I was like, all ready, ready, ready to go. So uh, I was saying goodnight to her and took a chance. And, and, I, and I got, uh, got to give her a real kiss. And uh, uh, you know, innocent pressing of lips kind of thing. And, uh, but for me, it was fireworks. And uh, you know, it was never the same. One of the Brady Bunch's most outrageous rumors concerns a very special evening between Chris Knight and Eve Plum. The show is coming to an end, and I um, turned 16 and got my license and now had my own wheels and asked Eve on a date. So I guess I just decided we'd pick it up where we left it off on the QE2. And it was a, supposed to be a sure thing. And not in that way, but in a sure thing in that she'd say yes and not say no. We ended up um, on Mulholland. Um, in my truck, it's a romantic spot. We were in the back of the truck. It had a little cabin, you know, on it. The police come and shine flashlights in the car and ask us to get out. And there were clothes on. There were some clothes off, but there were. Yeah, there, it was. Yeah, they said, "Put your clothes back on. Put your clothes on and get out here." Uh, and mind you, she. I, I was pretty much the the student up until this point. You know, I was just giving her more of an opportunity to be the teacher. That's how I was looking at it. <laughs> Coming up, the Brady Bunch erupts in a battle of greed. My mom was the greediest of all. When it gets popular and, and money starts getting made, that's when the fights start. Plus, the dark secret behind America's number one father. I knew that Bob was gay when I was nine. All when TV Guide, the truth behind the sitcom scandals returns. Though the Brady Bunch was never a critical or top 10 hit, the series was very successful financially, and it wasn't long before confrontations erupted over higher salaries and creative demands. Eventually, an attempt was made to take control of the show, away from its creator and producer, Sherwood Schwartz. Who was greedy on the show? My mom was the greediest of all. She was probably the ringleader in, in, in wanting more money. And so these kids, uh, or their parents, hired two attorneys. Basically, the idea was to take the ownership of the show away from him. But it, it was so, so completely unethical. And they said the kids have been terribly underpaid. We were a factory making a product. Because this is one of the highest rated shows in the history of show business. They blustered in with a threat they're going to remove the kids from the show, which of course they couldn't because of were contracts. We got a lawyer who started seeing dollar signs whenever he looked at us. And um, because the show was a hit, we were doing music and this and that, um, you know, more money was in order. When it gets popular and, and money starts getting made, that's when the fights start. So that, that killed it. Um, and we were really just starting to get some momentum. The financial disagreements of the Brady Bunch were minor, however, compared to the ongoing struggle between the show's creator and the actor who played Mike Brady, Robert Reed. Schwartz originally wanted a newcomer for the role, an actor named Gene Hackman, but he was convinced by Paramount executives to give the part to Reed, a studio contract player. The fireworks were immediate and constant. 
we have two father figures. We have Robert Reed, who, who, who very much treated us like a father. Um, very kind, very protective, very good man. And we have Sherwood Schwartz, who, who uh, you could say all the same things about. I never let anything leak that there was any problems between uh, their, their TV father and me. They were just absolutely at war with each other. I can remember some tense moments on the set. It wasn't always, you know, a, a real, real happy, <laughs> happy place to be. Blow-ups, blow-ups all the time. A lot of Bob's complaints were just, you know, just the fact that he didn't want to be in that show. He didn't want to be working with the producers that he's working with. He hated everything. And since I represented, in his mind, everything, he hated me the most. And the battles were, uh, were of a severe nature, and they were ongoing. His hatred also lent itself to my son, who was my, my producer. I was the executive producer. I differ from my dad in terms of my opinion of Robert. I'm harder on him because I don't believe he should get any credit for anything about his kindness toward the kids. He was very generous with the kids, and he loved them. When he would do things for them, he was really trying to buy their affection because what he was really doing in my opinion, was, was fighting for control of the family. And if he was the head of the family in his head somewhere, then there was really no place for Sherwood or myself. He had to get rid of us, and he spent five years trying to do that. And he was most unkind and sometimes just brutal. Bob was really trying to make trouble over a lot of things that really didn't matter. Here's, a, here's an example. Mrs. Brady and the housekeeper, Alice, were each cooking a pot of strawberries to enter in a festival of some sort. And he was supposed to come to this archway and take a deep breath and say, this smells like strawberry heaven. He said, here's the Encyclopedia Britannica. It says, and I quote, strawberries while cooking have no odor. I smelled strawberries in the kitchen. I smelled strawberries in the living room. I said, I smell strawberries here in your dressing room. And he'd say, do you want me to believe you or the Encyclopedia Britannica? Even Florence would sometimes lash out at Bob and say, look, hit your mark, say your lines. And you know, of course, he didn't appreciate that. He said, I refuse to put up with this <laughs> And Ann B, finally, she's a wonderful lady. But she'd been fed up with this, too. And she said, how deep is your sh Mr. Brady? When we come back, you'll hear the truth about Robert Reed's scandalous double life. All this sordid sex stuff. Brady Bunch, father, dies of AIDS. And you'll learn the real story behind Susan Olsen's post-Brady career. I actually do have a porn credit. When TV Guide, the truth behind the sitcom scandals continues. Playing TV's number one father was more than a professional strain to Robert Reed. His personal life held a secret that if revealed would not only shock the country, it could result in the cancellation of the Brady Bunch. I knew his sexual preference. I knew that Bob was gay when I was nine. Well, that's a difficult thing to live with when you're at the ideal father of, a, of the whole country, which is hundreds of millions of people. And at the same time, that's not really what you are or want to be. It's my belief, just a belief, that since he was really reckless in terms of one night stands and things, that he wanted to get caught at some point or other. Otherwise, he'd have settled down with just a guy or two guys or whatever. But to be indiscriminate, at, it's like playing Russian roulette. You know, you pull the trigger several times or 20 times, maybe even if it takes. You're gonna, a bullet's going to hit you in the head. And finally, it did. When Bob passed away, The, uh, the rags, the uh, inquirers and stars took his career and reduced it to like 
two sentences. And that really hurt. Because he, um, he was a man of great, great ability and talent. And then it was all this sordid sex stuff. Brady Bunch, father, dies of AIDS. And it was like, I, he, that would have killed him alone. <laughs> I'll say this. I think this is an important thing to say. Bob Reed, because he was such a stickler for things that didn't count, gave an air of believability to the show that would have been gone if I, if I really went out and got a guy with a sense of humor, I would have lost. I would have lost, I would have lost the, the, the grounding in reality that Bob Reed gave the show because he had no sense of humor. And that was helpful. Perhaps the most outrageous sitcom rumor of all is the story of Susan Olsen and her career choice after The Brady Bunch. There was a movie being circulated around the, amongst the troops during uh, <laughs> the Persian... Gulf Crisis, and it was a movie called Crocodile Blondie, and the girl in it, they say, looked like me. Well, I had, I had certainly heard that Susan Olsen was a porno star. Now, I'm, I know Susan. I'm not completely convinced she's not. Um... I actually do have a porn credit. Mm -hmm. I have a friend that worked in editing um, in the, the wonderful world of adult entertainment. I had just gotten a synthesizer and I was making like weird noises. And he called me up and he said, can you, do you think you could do some like spaceship sound effect noises? And I said, yeah, that'd be an interesting challenge. They were the background uh, sound effects in Love Probe from a Warm Planet. And that is my porn, my porn credit. I do have one. Fox 11 News is next. An 11-month-old baby taken from his home. Tonight, police search for the mystery woman suspected.